evening everyone welcome to national startup bootcamp 1.0 so i would like to invite professor avijit banerji to start the session sir hello friends welcome to this transformational venture today's session is business risk assessment and creating disaster recovery plan the learning objectives are to understand the need for business risk assessment of small businesses to understand three steps of risk assessment and business impact analysis to understand the risk management process developing a simple risk assessment matrix for small business developing risk mitigation strategy and plan after attending this session you shall be able to develop the risk assessment matrix for your business and to draw the risk mitigation plan i would like to recommend a book robert s kaplan uh it's it's actually hbr paper and the link is available i will later on send it to you yes next please the need for business risk assessment of small businesses owning your own business comes with various risk which i am pretty sure you are not surely aware of unlike small businesses in united states and other developed countries majority of small businesses in india do not realize the necessity of risk profiling of their businesses given that reality it's important for every small business owner to have a risk management strategy in place from the very day one having a right plan will help you to protect your business in case of any disaster and should help you to keep your doors open even during the difficult times you will need to take the time to identify possible risk to your business then you can work out the odds of each event and the potential cost to your business in order to set up a contingency plan to protect the business here we will look at how to replace business risk by conducting a risk assessment of small businesses and acting accordingly business risk assessment identify potential hazards and their consequences companies of all sizes use them to try to reduce business risk create disaster recovery plans and also purchase insurance for what they cannot completely control small businesses have and especially pressing need for these assessments a survey of eva small business administration showed that about a quarter of small businesses never recover after a disaster small companies need to identify the vulnerable factors and potential problems in order to make the plans to eliminate or cope up with them of course businesses also use this information to cover any risk that cannot be completely controlled with proper insurance 
वट एवर पॉसिबल द फर्स्ट स्टेप इन मैनेजिंग योर बिजनेस रिस्क इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट वन मेजर रीजन वाई स्मॉल बिजनेस इज क्लोज देयर डोर्स इज ड्यू टू पुअर रिस्क असेसमेंट but knowing how to properly manage business risk and perform business risk analysis will help you become among the 44% of businesses that remain in business longer than 4 years there are risk that are common to all small businesses and as a small business owner you are also aware of the specific risk to your business let us take an example while a broken wrist may be a huge problem for a plumber or a photographer it's possible that a yoga instructor could easily work around it for a few weeks in addition there may be risk for a new business that differ to those for an established business it is important to consider both common risk faced by the small businesses and those that are unique to your business while compiling all the risk factors you need to consider apart from the risk involved with the business environment factors market risk factors financial risk etc there are also many other risk factors for which a small business becomes vulnerable there is a list of business risk examples that you should also consider number 1 property risk this should be caused by theft fire natural calamity or by physical damage number 2 business interruption losses this means that your business would no longer be able to sell its product or offer its services this ongoing lockdown due to covid-19 situation is the best example of business interruption loss when you are not in a position to continue your regular business key person loss this includes if a key person in the business becomes sick or injured or dies the loss of this person could significantly impact a small business number 4 liability loss this covers any legal liability to property or people that your business is responsible for number 5 defective products this may result in damage to people recall for a physical product or public relation issues number 6 injuries this covers injuries to an employee while at work we shall explain all these issues along with other major aspects at our later slides next please these are the three steps of risk assessment and business impact analysis risk assessment spot potential problems 
but a business impact analysis identifies how these problems might affect a particular business. Since these two tasks go hand in hand, it is useful to describe them together. These are the three steps of a risk assessment and business impact analysis. Step one, identify the hazards. This step consists of, this step consists of simply listing which business risk a particular company might face. This could include acts of nature, fire, mechanical breakdowns, or even cyber attacks. Step two, identifying assets that could be at risk. This step consists of identifying which business or external assets might be damaged by one of the hazards listed here. Some common examples are employees, customers, buildings, a business reputation, or even the environment factors. Step three is analysis of the impact. This is the last step, consists of figuring out what type of harm could be done to the company assets. For example, the company could lose money in a legal case, if a person gets injured, it could be fined for being out of compliance with regulations, or it might suffer a loss of customers after the, say, cyber attack, steals personal information from a sales database. After analyzing of all these reports, whoever acts as the company's risk manager can try to mitigate each of the risk. For example, a safety program, smoke detectors and fire extinguishers might reduce the risk of accidental fires. Better security could reduce the chance that hackers can steal vulnerable data. Of course, no small business can take steps to totally eliminate every threat. But these are examples of good first steps all such small but continuous improvements applying the Japanese Kaizen technique can reduce your business risk to a large extent. Next, please. The risk management process. Small businesses are considered to be the most vulnerable to risk as they are the most sensitive entities with low capacity to absorb any unprecedented loss. Most people consider setting up a business at high risk. Small businesses face a number of risks, but not all of them are essentially bad. It's all about planning and managing those risks to make sure that a business can survive if things don't go exactly as planned. 
that is where our risk assessment process comes in there is a strong relationship between risk and return it is impossible to achieve business gains without taking on at least some risk the purpose of risk assessment is not to eliminate the risk but to optimize the risk reward ratio within the bounds of the company's owner's own risk tolerance avoiding risk is always a good idea whenever possible however some risk is necessary to ensure the survival and the growth of any business therefore the business owners must look at the ways to mitigate their risk wherever possible as we say prepare for the worst and hope for the best risk management process involves overall risk identification risk analysis and risk evaluation as it was discussed in earlier slide the core principle behind the analysis is to address the unacceptable risk and monitor those unacceptable risk this assessment will help you to buy the right insurance to protect your business against things that you cannot control the more steps that your company takes to be minimize threats the cheaper that insurance premium is likely to be risk assessment and impact analysis can help prevent losses and result in lower insurance premium it is also a fact that insurance companies in india generally do not cover all business risk profiles unlike usa or other developed countries but small businesses should take the benefit of insurance products whatever are available with you next developing a simple risk management risk assessment matrix for the small businesses this risk assessment matrix is actually a tool that is used during the risk assessment process it defines a level of risk by considering the probability or likelihood of an event against the severity of the consequences to the business if it were to occur a risk assessment matrix is a visible representation of risk to assist a business in decision making and mitigation the first step in developing a risk assessment matrix is to make a comprehensive list of all the operational and business risk financial risk government mental business risk that we discussed in the previous slide the next step is to take the list of risk that you developed in the previous step and add the likelihood that risk may occur to each one risk likelihood can be divided into three categories probable very likely to happen possible likelihood some chance of happening and improbable likelihood small chance of happening next you and Uh, you look and 
at each risk profile and determine its impact to the business if it were to happen. Risk impact can be divided into four categories. Zero acceptable, little or no uh, major impact on the business. One tolerable, effects are failed but do not seriously affect the business. Three, two, unacceptable, causes major disruption to the business. And three, intolerable. Business may not recover. Based on the likelihood and impact of each risk, place this risk into a risk assessment matrix. I will give you an assignment to develop a risk assessment matrix for your business, which you have to do of your own. Actually, the purpose of this e-bootcamp is to strengthen the startup founders. So with the help of such small, small tools, you can solve many of your generic problems and for the higher level of problems, we are already there to help you. Next slide, please. The advantages of using a risk assessment matrix. The advantages of uh, using it, when it comes to risk assessment, that it helps the business to prioritize risk with their level of severity to the business, neutralize the possible consequences by helping to focus mitigation efforts, analyze potential risk with minimum effort, visually convey the potential risk. It's important to understand that a risk assessment matrix is only a tool, as I mentioned earlier, not a complete solution. It's not easy to assess risk or manage them alone. Developing a risk assessment matrix involves a lot of subjective assignments and assigning the arbitrary values to risk based on ambiguous information. However, in spite of its shortcomings in terms of total accuracy, it is great tool to give the business a place to start when it comes to risk management and developing a mitigation strategy, which we'll discuss in the next slide. Please, next. Risk mitigation strategy. What do you do? when you find vulnerability in your business. Risk mitigation is the action that you should take to reduce threats and ensure your resilience. Risk mitigation can be defined as taking some steps to reduce the adverse effects of risk. Here are the four different types of risk mitigation strategies that hold unique to business continuity and disaster recovery. When mitigating the risk, 
it is important to develop a strategy that closely relates to and matches to your company's profile the four steps of risk mitigation one risk acceptance two risk avoidance three risk transfer and four risk reduce risk acceptance does not reduce any effects however it is still considering a strategy this strategy is a common option when the cost of other risk management options such as avoidance or limitation may outweigh the cost of the risk itself a company that doesn't want to spend a lot of money on avoiding risk that don't have a high possibility of occurring will use the risk acceptance strategy risk avoidance is the opposite of risk acceptance it is the action that avoids any exposure to the risk whatsoever it's important to note that risk avoidance is usually the most expensive of all the risk mitigation options third is risk transference it is the involvement of handling risk of to a willing third party for example numerous companies outsource certain operations such as customer service payroll service etc this can be beneficial for a company if a transfer risk is not a core competence of your company it can also be used to a company that can focus more on their core competence risk limitations it is the most common risk management strategy used by the businesses this strategy limits a company's exposure by taking some action it is a strategy employing a bit of risk acceptance along with a bit of risk avoidance or an average of both an example of risk limitation would be a company accepting that a disk drive may fail and avoiding a long period of failure by having its backups all these four risk mitigation strategies require proper monitoring vigilance is needed so that you can recognize and interpret changes to the impact of that risk next please next slide please yes risk mitigation plan checklist uh business continuity is all about risk mitigation and a risk mitigation plan is extremely important if you are not looking at how to reduce eliminate or accept risk you are actually missing the mark while not everything you create or spend time uh, 
doing your work will directly impact risk mitigation. You should always be able to identify how each activity relates to mitigating the risk. If this is not the case, you may want to reconsider why you are performing the task. To that end, the following checklist may be of your great help to develop a general risk mitigation plan as well as creating plans or actions for some specific risk in your organization. I suggest the use of the checklist as they are efficient, straightforward, and it will ensure important items are not missed. While these items may seem obvious and not very complicated, the key of risk mitigation is action, not just writing reports or making list of action items. Sometimes for the bigger organization where management hierarchy exists, management support Step one, that can be the most challenging and most critical. But often for the small organization, they go directly to step three and step three to five, working hard to identify, update risk, assess, prioritize the risk, and determine mitigation options. Few businesses actively develop, implement, monitor risk and review the, their plans, which are described in steps 6 to 10. I recommend that you start this process. You must have enough information and visibility related to risk for your organization to make appropriate decisions. Using the steps outlined in this checklist to create your own uh, risk mitigation plan will guide you through the entire process. And that will also help validating and documenting your decisions. Next, please. As a conclusion remarks, I would like to quote Paul Gibbons, one of today's leading business scholars from his book, The Science of Successful Organizational Change, How Leaders Set Strategy, Change Behavior, and Create an agile culture. The quotation, the famous quotation is, business people need to understand the psychology of risk more than the mathematics of risk. Let me explain this quotation in the context of current COVID-19 situation worldwide. It is interesting to watch the evolving discussion about opening up various states and countries in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. In USA, as we uh, are coming to know from different uh, social media platforms, that the protesters swarmed over several states' capital, demanding that the governors should begin withdrawing what they believe to be draconian uh, shutdown rules. 
in the United States, it appears that there are two clearly defined groups. One believes that they need to maintain the shutdown to stop and spread of the virus. And the other group believes that they are reaching a tipping point and the harm of closing the economy is greater than the risk of the virus. We are finding similarity in Indian context too. It appears that both are viable propositions. So, why is there such disagreement? Any disagree, they disagree because neither side is following the most basic risk management principles. This is where it helps to actually have a risk expert in the room to facilitate the discussion between both the parties. This is the importance of risk management everywhere, in every situation, in every business. I hope my session was successful in convincing you that risk management is a vital part of your business. Whatever size it is, I am pretty sure the way we learn the risk management today you will be able to initiate it of your own. If you need any expert help, please write to JLF Business School. We will be happy to provide our best support to empower the startup founders. Over to Umang, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. About our next session, we will soon update you in group. Please be updated. Thank you.